and welcome to another episode of the Woods Water Mizzou podcast. I'm a real coach, Skeeter. Welcome to tonight, as usual, our case and Cole. How y'all doing? Good. Been good, man. It's turkey season next week. I'm just fantastic. Well, if you weren't so old, it was turkey season this weekend, but we'll get into that in just a minute. I uh, want to thank uh, Murphy, Kenny, and Summy as our presenting sponsor. Call them for... And I, I was trying to look online to do, uh, you know, a little, little promo commercial for them. And I don't think there's a whole lot that, that they don't do. Um, you know, they do employ, employment disputes, personal injury cases, domestic issues, or even if you're facing criminal charges or traffic violations, they've got your back. Uh, they're in Kansas City, Missouri, but they are barred for the whole state. So... You don't just have to be in the KC area uh, to call our friends over at MKS Law. Check them out at McKinney, Sumi, uh, or Murphy, Kenny, Sumi dot com. Uh, telephone number is 816-281-5470. Hopefully you don't need them, but if you do, tell them. We sent you from the Woodswater Mizzou. That helps us uh, keep the sponsorship going, but appreciate them. Fellas, it's kind of the time of the year where if you don't really pay attention, you don't think there's a whole lot going on at Mizzou Athletics, but it was a big week, a uh, big, bigger weekend uh, for those of us that, that follow baseball. But let's start off with middle of the week. Uh, four-star quarterback Matt Zollers out of Pennsylvania announces his commitment to our Missouri Tigers. And that's huge because that's Eli going in and getting somebody out of the Northeast, recruiting him and getting that verbal commitment over Penn State, Georgia. You know, sounds like the kid could have if, – if you can play for Georgia, I think you about – pick whatever college you want to go play college football at for him to say he's committed to Mizzou. That's a a great way to start off the spring summertime football there for us, right? It's just a great way to start the class off. I think getting your QB first is massive. Uh, Previously, we've always been the kind of keep me get their tight end first. It just feels like the drink hallmark has always been get your four star tight end. It's from St. Louis or Kansas city first. Now I'm not talking trash because North fleet was an absolute, home run like that kid is a freshman dynamite i think everyone agrees with that uh but what i like about this one a lot is there's two types of quarterbacks that you get uh early in the, like this time there is you know high four stars high five high four stars and five stars for sure but there's either this guy has every measurable and there's this guy is just kicking tail right now and is maybe like just dominating kids in the field so let's do let's do this, the tale of two quarterbacks right now we have zollers He's committed to your Missouri Tigers. His measurables are that very similar. He's about he's the exact same weight and height as Brady Cook right now. So what you would think he would get a little heavier as more muscle comes on going through his college career. But imagine Brady Cook in your head. We all know Brady Cook, great player, but he does not have like that pro guy measurables. Uh, there's a quarterback, five star, uh, three spots ahead of our guy going to Tennessee. He has every measurable possible. He's tall. He has the best hand size. He's a little thin, but other than that, he has like everything they want. His stats are like 25 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. Our guy's got 36 touchdowns to two interceptions. Both play extremely high-level football in their state. So I am biased to the Tigers, obviously, but also – Man, give me the kid that's balling out right now. Like, measurable measurables. Like, if he's balling, I want him. That's my guy. So, I, I'm very excited about this one because that's the kind of big-time recruit I want. Nailed it. And I love the uh, shmeasurables. I haven't heard that one before, but I really like that. Yeah, man, Zoller is exciting. I've heard a couple comparisons to, you know, a lot of these um, recruiting sites will give – a comparison to a player that's been drafted or, you know, similar skill set. I've heard Johnny Manziel. I've heard he's, a, you know, a modern day Chase Daniel, but a little bit bigger. I mean, just all kinds of, of comparisons based off of what they saw in his junior year. And that's the beautiful thing is 
he put up a great year. I think you talked about it, Casey. He had, um, what, just shy of 3,000 yards, 30-some-odd touchdowns to two picks and almost 500 yards rushing to seven rushing touchdowns. So he's, I mean, yeah. great stat. And I'm assuming he's playing at a pretty high-end school there in Pennsylvania. But um, he he's exciting. He's electric. Kid's got a cannon, rocket arm. And it's – I'm not going to say it's about time that we got to commit, but uh, just looking through some of the other recruiting sites and seeing where some of these other quarterbacks are committed to, where we're kind of one of the last ones uh, that were recruiting a quarterback. So, like you mentioned, for us to finally get that one checked off the list for this class is huge. And, you know, it might get a little bit of momentum rolling, but – you guys know we're going to year five with drink. Uh, his, his commits always come late. They don't. Yeah, they do. They're not committing. You know, midway through their junior year, he'll get a few during their uh, the summer in between their junior and senior year, and then a couple more sprinkled throughout the uh, throughout the football season. So, but we got the monkey off our back. Was an uh, early. Yeah, like if you look like timeline, like his early for him is before the senior season, like like school year time. So like Williams Noary was an early commit for drink when and then everyone came after that. You know what I mean? Besides uh Prez, everyone came after that. Yeah. And and when you when you get the quarterback that uh has has the star power and uh the potential that somebody likes out. Zowers does, you know, that's receivers across the country are going to take notice. Um, running backs, linemen, this, the quarterback is the position that recruits the rest of the team like no other, you know, has, has the potential to recruit the team like no other. And so that's a, that's a big poker chip that Jankwich gets to use now when he's going and talking to high schoolers, uh, even transfer portal, you know, and, not only that, it gives a glimpse to the future for the underclassmen that are already on the team because we got to face it now. You know, coach coaches have said it across all levels of college athletics now in all sports. Not only are they going out and recruiting, you know, high schoolers and transfer portal kids, they've also got to recruit their team every year to stay on. And so when you've got, you know, somebody that's, that's going to be a year or two ahead of, of Zoller's coming in. Well, now they're seeing the guys coming behind them coming in that are highly rated, you know, and, and so the, the idea of staying at Mizzou and keeping this culture that we have going right now and, and you know, building each year, I think it's, it helps in so many different ways when you get uh, a highly rated quarterback like this. And so I see nothing but benefits. Now <laughs> we also have to keep in mind a commitment from a high schooler in April doesn't hardly mean a whole lot come December anymore. So uh, we hope to keep him. It's not a sign and sealed type deal. Um, I know there's, you know, living in Arkansas, I hear, uh, the Arkansas sports talk radio and, and the fans here, well, Missouri's only getting these recruits because they can pay them in, in high school. Well, if you go read the law, the law is only for in-state kids that pick an in-state university. So that NIL rule does nothing for this quarterback out of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania quarterback, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it, it did nothing so for, like real, like they for really Botang do down here in Arkansas. Kid? Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, you know, they just, they hear things and they take it and run without actually getting facts. Uh, now Jeez. granted a good majority of the fan base cannot read. So they just have to take what they hear as the truth. Uh, <laughs> I, I gotta watch what I say. I'm sending kids to Arkansas schools, so. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a culture. It's wanting to come and play. And then you have the sale that we had to finish off 
the football season. You have a Cotton Bowl win. You're primed for a 12-team playoff position this coming season. And it's recruiting class, recruiting class, and getting, you know, a few pieces out of the portal. Not At the end of the year, we didn't have just a grand wave of guys we lost. Uh, you know, guys that committed last – or that made a difference in last year's team or played a lot, we didn't lose a whole lot of those guys that are eligible to come back this year. So I, I just see kids are getting drawn to Columbia – wanting to be a part of what Missouri Tigers have going for them. And for somebody that's 37 years old, and hasn't been the case a whole lot of my life, you know, so I'm excited for that part of it. Yeah, it's definitely a fun era to be in a Mizzou fan for recruiting. Like we've definitely got some momentum. I think, and I think it's a combination of all of it. A lot of the, you know, other teams rivals when the haters and say it's all money, you'd be silly to say it's not part of money. Cause in today's age, if you don't got money, you're not getting players. But I think it's also a culture thing. I think drinks built something with the culture in our locker room where you get there, you visit everyone, and it's infectious. It's something you wouldn't be a part of. And, um, man, as long as they let us keep paying players like this, the NIL, and to keep you know things going good, we're going to roll. Yep. Well, it, in our pre-show, we didn't really talk about gymnastics, and we didn't, we didn't think of it. Uh, earlier in the year, case you had talked about doing a gymnastics segment because the girls had a great season uh unfortunately it appears from the article i'm i'm reading here that uh they got eliminated in national competition today in florida i saw where a bunch of people were complaining about scores and said you know maybe we were getting the the lower end of the score for judges for what was warranted from our girls but definitely want to congratulate them on the great year that they had uh there was you know two or three freshmen that came in this year and really put up some numbers and i think there's a lot of excitement um from other ladies and just mizzou fans in general that paid a little bit more attention to gymnastics this year than years past uh is there anything else we need to say on that i mean I had a good season i think it's a good program very proud to have them represent mizzou um, I did hear, I did read some stuff. It looks like, because gymnastics is a weird sport where like the judges have a lot of influence and yeah. like yeah. they can be a little biased. And I did see that they were very biased towards Utah State and gave them some higher scores on uh, on Beam than they didn't they deserve and gave them zoo a few lower. So um, that's probably you no, know, that's here or there. They had some excuses, as are often people who watch a lot more gymnastics than I do, but I don't know. That's worth noting, I think. Yep. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Just I wouldn't be able to look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's a quarter of a point more than what that girl did. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't have the eyes for that. Uh, Cole, you have anything you wanted to say for our ladies in gymnastics? No, just proud of them. I mean, they made a second round of regionals for, you know, the, I believe, second consecutive year and just. Yeah. Just proud of them overall. I mean, the there's so many sports within the SEC that are just absolute gauntlets. Uh, baseball, softball, gymnastics, football, basketball has its up in years, you know, up and down years. So anytime that you're competitive, uh, I think they finished what fourth in the SEC. They were in the final four of the SEC. Um, mm -hmm. You know, meet and then they they made regionals again, and it's, it's just. Yeah, it's tough. There's so much. It's hard to be critical on something when someone else is literally judging you. You can put your best performance out there possible. You can do everything perfect, and it all comes down to that person's perception of what you just did. That very likely cannot do what you can do anymore, at least. You know, I don't doubt that some of these judges are former gymnasts. And at one point could do what these girls are doing, but yeah, it's just tough to say. It's such a such an intriguing sport, uh, you know, from the judge's perspective for you know, looking at it from the fact that you are literally judged. It's not mono we mono, it's someone else, you know, giving you a grade, basically. Yeah. It it reminds me of PBR bull riding, just bull riding in general, but you know, you've got 
judges in the arena watching and they give a bull a score and a rider a score. And, you know, J.B. Mooney always had the ability to make himself look like he was hanging on the end of the rope and he'd get a 90-point ride. And it's like, I don't think that was really warranted, but okay. You know, so that's kind of how I felt we got today. Uh, but like I say, I don't, I don't know gymnastics enough to, to point out and say, yep, yeah, this is where we got screwed. So I just have to take the expert's opinion on this, uh, softball. We'll talk about it because we'll, we'll end Mizzou athletics on a good note. The girls came down to my backyard, down to Fayetteville this weekend, uh, lost the opening game Friday, five to two. Bounce back Saturday, I think a 12 to 5 win, and then dropped today's uh, match. I took my boys to it and uh, just Arkansas had a pitcher that seemed to be able to get out of whatever jam she got herself in. You know, with the first inning, we loaded the bases and didn't get a run across. And when you when you have innings like that and the opportunity to, to score is there and you you're not able to capitalize on it. It it doesn't take long in a softball game with only seven innings and you blink and it's over with. But uh, drop that one today and drop the series to the Razorbacks. But it's not it's not panic time. You know they went down and got swept at Auburn a few weeks or no, it was Tennessee we got swept by and then bounced back and swept mm-hmm. Auburn. Uh, and went on a little little run there. So hopefully Coach Anderson and the rest of the staff will, will get them to bounce back coming from there. And then before we go into our baseball segment, let's go ahead and shout out our guest segment sponsor. We're not having a guest on this week, but we want to shout out Mr. Mickey at 573 Tees. He's great for custom apparel. You can even go in and get some uh, – podcasty gear from us uh he's he's constantly working on designs he's a busy man he's a busy man i know there's a lot of times it's like i don't see how he's able to do it all himself but he he busts his butt up there and great guy uh big time mizzou fan and always like being able to support and shop local anyways and when you're when you're buying stuff from Mickey, it's probably getting spent back on Mizzou athletics in some form or fashion. I think he went to every Mizzou game besides like one road game this year. Yeah, right. Dude, Mickey's wild. He is super fan, and yeah. if you know where he's at, you go find him. And he is so fun. Half time, go talk to him, get his opinion on what's going on, because he'll give it to you straight up. That's it. So five seven three T's. Appreciate him for his sponsorship of the guest segment. Like I say, we don't have a guest on this week. But, fellas, baseball. So, we didn't record last weekend because it was Easter. So, we we did our hunting public uh, with Matt Warburton or Britton on to Aaron. talk. Or Aaron. My bad. You're messing my up bad. all kinds of names today. I had Matt, your brother-in-law, in my head there for some reason, I guess. But I had him on and talk Missouri Turkey. And so, we didn't, we didn't have a recap. Last weekend – They went to Nashville and got swept by Vanderbilt. They come back home, midweek series, a two-game series against UT Martin. And, fellas, you don't take any of these games for granted the way the season's gone uh, so far. (laughs) And you kind of saw something in the midweek series. You know, they they win uh, on the second, 13-3, run ruled them, and then on the third – uh, Wednesday they win fifteen to nine, and that only leads into the weekend series against number five, six, whatever poll you want to look at. If you you look at the Woods Water Mizzou National Baseball Writers uh, poll, Florida's not even ranked. You know, like they're they're garbage, <laughs> they're trash. Uh, Tigers are number one every day, all year long. Have been for our whole existence, but. Florida comes in, uh, and Case, I know you're our baseball guru as far as this goes, so I'll let you take over from there to talk about what kind of weekend we had. No, I think you tweeted something earlier in the week that I think is more than anything about this. 
Yeah, we beat UTM in a series, swept them, and you said, hey, I know it's just UTM, but uh, a sweep is a sweep, and that means a lot, you know? Yep. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people on Twitter are just like, okay, I just went past it. But I think you nailed it. This team's got talent. They just couldn't figure out how to win. They hadn't tasted winning an SEC yet. They hadn't tasted winning really very much at all this year. They were losing series to Purdue, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Community College. <laughs> but they had to taste it. I think the I think the Kentucky win and they they you know lost series, but they you know, went to rubber match in Kentucky. I think got the wheels turned a little bit. They lost to the Jayhawks, lame. They beat Jayhawks, lost to Jayhawks, lost to Illinois, ugh. but then they beat they beat UTM. And the pitching was coming around. They're keeping these scores. You all remember this part of the scanner season. This scores around insane. We're losing games 15 to 13. Like it was just, we could not pitch. Man, the bullpen is steady. The, hey, rotation is looking pretty good lately. You know, uh, Logan Lunsford had a heck of a game this series. There's, there's no secret sauce. There's no one thing that's making this team better. They just are learning how to win. And maybe. People like me got upset, jumped the gun on it. It probably takes time to build a baseball program the way you want it to. It probably takes time to get all these guys. There's no spring training. You know, your spring training are games that actually count for your record when you go play, you know, whoever, like these the start of the season games. So, man, I think you look at it. I, I tweeted this, and I think I, I want to reiterate this on our on our show. The um, the ship is on the right path, I think. And, you know, ships don't always just go straight. The tide moves you one way, you got to come back. Tide moves you this way, you got to come back. But the ship's going the right direction. It is going to take time. It's going to take more players. But it's I, I'm at least confident now, and I wasn't confident earlier because I jumped the gun, I think, that it was going the right direction. But I think this series shows that. This was a big win. This is a statement win. This is like drink beating LSU uh, in his first year as head coach. You know, yeah. different season. I know weird weird things, but I do think this this shows a lot that KJ knows what he's doing. Yeah, and you he know, nailed you, it. And, um, there's there's one other thing I want to touch on is Brock Daniels, who you know, case when you and I met up at that game, we we talked to Brock's mom for a little while, and and you know, nice lady. Introduced her to the show, and yeah, super nice lady. But Brock had a key, you know, key day today to kind of seal um, the sweep. You know, yes, they they could have lost us today, but still won the series. But man, to say that you swept the number six team in the country, um, who at this point is now six and six in the SEC. That's Florida. We're four and eight. Um, but man, the Gators' overall records only seventeen and fourteen. We're 15 and 18. So the fact that they were number six in the country with that record, now obviously they're going to be. It was a little inflated. Kind of, yeah, a little bit. But um, it's why it's like LSU that when you were drinking, they didn't even be there either. Yeah, exactly. Uh, But Brock had a three for five day and then, you know, two out RBI, double to tie the game. Um, That's (laughs) basically for allow him to. Get in position to score the 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 run to seal the game to seal the sweep. That's huge. And the fact that you know we had just talked to his mom not even a month ago about you know his journey to Mizzou and, and you know his passion for the outdoors. It's just it's cool. And then like we've been saying all along, when you start Jackson Beeman, good things happen. So we're going to continue to pump that. And you know, case you talk about the rotation kind of coming to its own this weekend. If I would have told you last weekend, hey, you know, your your three scores are going to be 2-1, 4-3, and 11-10, you're probably thinking uh, we're not getting number five Florida, holding them to four runs in the first two games combined, you know, and then 11-10, that's – we can get the 10 runs across, but we probably go up to 11, you know, like uh, yeah. they, they, they took – everything, all our preconceived notions of what this team was and showed, you know, that they got a little tenacity and grit there in the dugout when when they're playing. And uh, I I did see where the message that was spoken this week to the team was believe. 
believe in yourselves, you know, zone out the outside noise and buy in to what we are and what we can do. And here we are on a five game winning streak now. And I think that that's going to catch a few eyes across the SEC. You know, I, I'm sure some of them will probably say, oh, it's Florida and Missouri in April. You know, that if you were to bring them in in May, there's no way Florida lose that series. But Mizzou had to play in the same elements that Florida did. So it's not like there is really an advantage there. So going into this week, our midweek game, it's not a series this week, it's Tuesday against SIUE. So uh, Southern Illinois, Edwardsville. And then we go to Athens starting Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to play take on Georgia. And I think Georgia's the next team above us in SEC baseball standings out of the east. So hey, there's there's a chance there we can keep the streak going and maybe uh just keep keep the momentum going and see where it goes. Uh, a season can turn really quick for the good or or the bad, you know, and uh I think it's a, a great thing that we're at this point in the season, we're talking about a five game win streak and sweeping an SEC opponent. So we'll take that any day of the year, I think, as far as that goes. Absolutely. Anything else, Mizzou athletics that we need to talk about that we have not talked about that y'all can think of off the top of your head? No? No, off the top of my head, no. no. Okay. So. Cole, I will let you talk about our presenting sponsor for the outdoor segment. Rack Daddy Minerals. Get them out, folks. Um, Dalton Wood, good friend of ours, presenting sponsor. You can use code MIZ10, it's MIZ-10, for 10% off your online order. Uh, get your minerals out. I've got some in the bed of my truck that need to be out right now. However, I'm waiting to put some out because some is grain. And this close to turkey season, I'm not going to get in trouble for putting out crane before turkey season. So even if it is for the deer. Um, but yeah, any of the other minerals that you want to put out for the deer, uh, go for it, man. You just go to MIZ10, save yourself a little bit of money on your online order and uh, support a local business, support the show. Yeah. Uh, before we get into Missouri outdoors, I do want to tell you about an article I saw this week for turkey season and hunting. So the state of Mississippi, their director of their conservation department got in a little bit of trouble this week, or I think it was the last weekend. He was hunting a field, a buddy's field, uh, and was told he was good to go and brought some friends with him. Okay. Okay. Well, the neighbors knew what the buddy, the, the landowner, had done the week leading up to the guest coming out to hunt. The landowner had released a bunch of crickets in the field to bake the turkeys. And so here come conservation agents. While the hunters are out there hunting after the field had been baited from turkeys. And now you have the state director of Mississippi <laughs> <laughs> for their conservation department getting in trouble for hunting a baited field. I uh, thought that was a little interesting story. He's playing. He was told it was all legal, that he didn't know that the crickets were released, and that very well may be true. But to see somebody in that position, imagine writing your boss a ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> that, uh, that's like some balls from from them game wardens there, but uh, the laws are the laws. The laws are the laws, man. Yeah. What a bad look. What a bad look for your whole state's conservation (laughs) department. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Bait and field. Yeah, especially when they're, you know, when they're preaching. I mean, Aaron just talked about it last week, how, you know, states like Mississippi and Georgia, and especially a lot of the South is modeling after you know what they do for their turkeys after missouri and 
are doing all these things to, you know, up their turkey population. And, well, guys, that doesn't mean you <laughs> dump a carton of crickets out in the field and <laughs> start. I mean, good heavens. Come on now. Be better than yeah, that. no, I'm with you. And you're right, because it's it just that reeks of so much like rules for the not for we like like, oh, no, we want. We want to take some turkeys. You follow the rules, but we'll, we'll you know, I, I want to take some turkeys. So I say good on for that, uh, for that warden for going and, and knocking him down a peg or two. Cause, and that, that to me just reeks of like, well, the rules are for you. Well, they're not, they're not for us. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, no it, doubt. it's a good article for the common guy. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a win for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for us. So, uh, that's a, that's a win for Joe. Blue, blue collar Joe has to work a whole day and misses Pat Donian Day. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure if he's director of conservation for the state of Mississippi, he can he can afford a ticket or two. You know what I mean? He it's yeah, not absolutely. Uh, instead of having steak one night, he'll have smoked pork loin or something. <laughs> you know, he's not trading the King Ranch over this. Yeah, uh, he'll be he'll be good to go. Um, before I turn it over to y'all to talk about your outdoor segments uh, and, and everything that you were doing this week to get prepared for turkey there's a little bit of missouri fishing news that's kind of got out there and it's it's really good things um down in lake of the ozarks depending on what part of the state of missouri you were born and raised in uh i guess the majority of the state calls them paddlefish where i'm from in southern missouri it's spoonbill but lake of the ozarks uh, a group of people Snagged a 164-pound new state record. Uh, that's that's a heck of a fish. That is a heck of a fish. Um, I don't know if if it can show up on there, but that's a that's high tech stuff from our podcast. Yeah. yeah. So for those watching, pull up to see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty impressive. I don't know if y'all ever been on Spoonbill or paddle fishing yourself from my understanding you just pretty well take an empty treble hook and drag it behind the boat until you snag one uh but getting 164 pound fish on on any line that's got to be a lot of fun so to do that in the state just goes to show what the state fishing has to offer and then over in festus which i believe is around south of st louis correct if i'm I thinking think so. correctly okay uh not only a state record, but a new world record big head carp uh, caught in, the, in that area, 97 pounds. The previous state record was 80 pounds in 2004 caught out of the Lake of the Ozarks. So when you take a state record and you add 17 pounds to it, that's pretty impressive. It's really impressive, I think. Uh, he, didn't even, he didn't even know he had broke any records. He I was reading the article and the old man took it down to a, a scrap metal place down the road and put it on their scales. And when it weighed, he's like, I'm gonna call the conservation agent out just to see this. And the conservation agent told him, said, well, it's a state record, but it's also a world record, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so that, that had to make that old man's day. Uh, if not, what his, kind of carp was it? A big head carp. Big head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty incredible. I'm gonna need these. I mean, congrats to both these anglers because that's, I mean, that's incredible. Catch a 164 pound paddlefish and then a 97 pound big head is two feats that very few, if any, people get to accomplish in their lives. But if these guys could quit catching these big fish in Missouri, to where we don't want a bunch of people coming and catching our big fish, we want them to go elsewhere. So. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I, I'm, I welcome all people's money to our uh, conservation program and to help our waters. So come on, come to me and pay a non-resident fishing license. I'm getting ready to do the same, go down there in Arkansas and catch all their smallmouth. So I'm getting ready to go to Colorado yeah. and pay now to stay one. Yeah. Does a hundred pounds seem like an absurd amount of fish to pull out of the water? Like... It's not my Depends kind of I don't the fish, fish carp. I fish like trout. I fish, you know, crappie. I fish bluegill. I fish bass. That seems just like an absurd amount of fish to pull out of the water to me. 
You get really excited like, for a three to five pounds. My child is. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, Skeeter. My child weighs like forty pounds, so sixty more pounds than my entire kid. On a that is so much. I don't know. I am. I like I said. That's what I fish. I don't fish anything that big, but that's an absurd amount of fish, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a big fish. And like just I said, a, it. I hit. think it depends on what it is. You know. If you're talking a hundred yeah, pounds, I'm sure saltwater guys they pull like they pull like dragons, right? If you're talking a hundred pounds collective of bluegill. Yeah, that's a lot of bluegill, you know, volume wise. Um, <laughs> but yeah, is it is it one uh, one hundred pound paddlefish? Still a huge fish, but yeah, it's not a lot. But still, that's that's a really really. Um, I'd love to know how he caught it. Did the article say how he caught the uh, oh, big head? Uh, he was running a uh, he's, he's fishing for catfish on the bottom of the Mississippi River there, and I just closed the article down. But trout he, line, I wonder. No, it was it wasn't trout line. But let me pull it back up, and I can tell you real quick. Uh, if y'all need to talk real quick, so it's not just dead silence on the podcast, because that was, was the not elect- that good. Was the electroshocking? Did he electroshock his fish? The long distance scoop it up with a phone net? call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was that bank would be, fishing. That would do it. Wasn't even a boat. He was bank fishing in a twenty-minute fight. Um. Well, this so article is not, wow. not telling me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. twenty-minute fight tells me rod and reel. Yeah. It, that's what the record is for is, is the rod and reel gotcha. aspect of it. Um, but yeah, that's incredible. That is incredible. Nonetheless, I mean, you get one like that, that's pretty good. He was using a bouncing crankbait. Bouncing crankbait. Fishing for cash. Bouncing crankbait. Yeah. And that pulled him a ninety seven pound carp. Yeah. That's that's quite the fight. Don't forget, you know, last month opened up the state's uh, trout state parks, being able to keep there. So uh, I think there's four of them across the state that are sponsored through the MDC with hatcheries and whatnot. And so uh, if you're looking for something to do there, that's it's great. And then, you know, where I'm at in Arkansas, Southern Missouri is not too far away, and I can tell y'all, we've been touching the 70s for quite a few days now, so them crappie are going to be getting closer to the shallows, getting ready to spawn, and that's when it's a a fun time to be out on the water. So just because it's the lull of of hunting season for most, um, there's, there's still plenty of outdoor activities to get out there and do and enjoy in the state of Missouri. Who knows? You might, you might make an article for setting another state or, or world record on a fish, but fellas, y'all are getting ready for, for Turkey season in case you went out on your farm. Cole, you've been doing a little bit of uh, going out and listening for birds. So I will let y'all talk about where you want to go there. The rip goal. In case you go first. No, you go first. Oh, you? It's fresh in your brain. Um, no, I didn't do anything you. crazy today, guys. I did put out some rack daddy minerals. Um, no, I don't really call turkeys and where I put my deer stuff at. So that's not a big deal in state law stuff. But I did put some rack daddy out. Um, always good to get that out. Got to keep them growing. Um, man, I just went out, checked the creek beds. Uh, this is maybe something people care about that's very important to me. I've got a water source going through my farm, but just a pure erosion. I've had a lot of it get dammed up. You know what I mean? Trees falling, the, the what like that. Um, it's finally kind of starting to work its way around it. So I'm getting a lot of good water flow, which is good, man. Water flow, I've always noticed for me on my property is the best chance at bagging a bird. They're going to come off the roost and just like everyone else, when you wake up, you want a drink of water. You want to clean your mouth out. And I've been, I've sure noticed that a lot of toms do that. So I like to, I like to, uh, you know, get in a tree line. It's about 30 yards off of that. 
let them get a drink and they hop up in my bottoms there. And, you know, I've, I've caught a couple birds like that. So, um, that's really good to see. That's really good for me. Just, I'm just trying to, just trying to see where the roosted, um, get an idea. That being said, uh, I feel like a lot can change between now and opening and maybe the first week they can, you know, roost can move. Um, I do got some issue with predators. I think I got, I think I need to do more predator elimination out there. Definitely work on my cat situation. Um, I didn't find any Turkey, uh, you know, corpse or anything like that. I have in the past, but I did find some other like, uh, you know, smaller animals while looking through. So that's something for me, but no man, just, just getting, getting out there, taking a look, put a ground blind up. I, I do like to hunt for ground blind in a few spots out there where there's not really good tree coverage. Um, that's about it, boys. Put some rack daddy out. Just see what there is to see. See what it's looking like. Sounds like a good day, man. Honestly, I mean, yeah, it's always good to be out you know, there. Right? Part around on the on the uh, on the farm. No, man, it's been um, past couple weeks, especially with us not recording last week. <sighs> man, Dad and I went crappie fishing on uh, Easter Sunday because my wife was in St. Louis and her mom, and my mom was working, so. Dad and I went crappie fishing. Um, didn't didn't end up landing any crappie, but got into the bluegill and bass uh, just a little bit, not as much as we were hoping for. Did a little mushroom hunting this week, just because some people I know in and around here of uh, of Boone County are finding them, Cooper County, and yeah, all that good stuff. So I think we're going Tuesday to do that, and we're gonna hop in the boat and cross the river and. Go to some more remote locations where hopefully people haven't been able to get to quite yet. And then, um, yeah, like Skeeter mentioned, I've been going out on the mornings that I open at work. It's finally starting to line up to where it's getting, you know, prime goblin time just as I've got about 20 minutes. To so y'all go there and turn my Merlin bird app on and. Obviously, I know what a turkey sounds like, but I want to know what other birds are in the area as well. And it's kind of cool because then you can go back and listen. You know, our memories tend to forget the minor details, but go back and listen to what what made that bird gobble. Was it owls going crazy? Was it a morning dove? Was it a crow? Was it, you know, a car hitting the rumple strip on the highway? You know what I mean? There's so many different things. So. Yeah, just listen to those details and kind of uh, trying to stay out. I'm just, I'm so excited for turkey season. Um, unfortunately, it's supposed to rain opening morning. This time next week, we'll have a much better indication of what the opening day forecast is going to be. But a week out, they're talking about rain. So I'm not too happy about that. I don't know about you boys. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I feel like I've taken a bird in the rain before. They gotta get out at some point. They gotta move around. They at some point they gotta move. They gotta get out. Yeah, they do, and they will. They'll get around, but those worms. I mean, yeah, not to say that I won't have any rain. <laughs> exactly, and they're typically more prone to get out into the pastures, into the open fields, into the ag mm -hmm. fields. So that does seem to kind of, I guess, narrow them down and, and funnel them to where you can at least expect them to be. They're going to be there guaranteed, but you can maybe expect them to be on a field if it's uh, a rainy, windy day. So, you okay. know what I gotta do, guys? Which is kind of interesting is I can't seem to find my fa my previous favorite turkey load. Um, so I had to switch chokes because the old choke I was using was old. It was an old uh, Primo's Jelly Head that I bought in twenty twelve, maybe. Well. There's so much new stuff. Like that's like the old pre TSS era. You know what I mean? Uh, everything I'm finding now is TSS. So I had to buy a new choke. Um, I got it's it's a True Glow, which I know is like the most oh, everyone's favorite brand. That grid reviews. It was the restriction I wanted. Um, it was a, honestly it was, it was only forty bucks, which is a fair price for a choke. You know they can get up to like 90, 80, 80 bucks. So I ended up going with that. And I need to pattern a few shells this weekend, boys. I had to buy, I bought a couple at my local Wally World um, and a, a box at my, at Rogers here in town. So I need, I need like, just because like, I think Ward mentioned that is like, you know what that gun does. 
Also, Warp and Crew did a really cool video on what they carry into the field for turkey, and I really enjoyed that. I think learning what people's loadouts are from like your buddy to people on YouTube, I think it's just a fun thing to do. Like I, I really enjoy that content. So I like that video a lot. But also, as he said in our show, you need to know your pattern. You need to know what you're good from. So this weekend, I think, so this upcoming weekend, I want to go out, go out to mom's house. I'm probably going to see some 20, 30, 40 yarders and see what I, I think on those, on these couple of shells and see what I got. Because I got a new choke and new shells now. So it is different ball game. All right. Well, let's, last thing for that door segment. Let's talk about the big thing um, for us while we're recording this. It's going to be tomorrow. But for everybody listening, it will probably be today or it's already happened. The clips. Uh, yep. Cole, you're probably going to be at the tower, I assume. Uh, you, have an elevated, you have an elevated viewpoint. You'll be able to see. Uh, Y'all are on the outskirts of totality, correct? Like it's, it's mm. probably oh, I'm way be out. close to you whatsoever case. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll be like in Maryville. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, be uh, I'll be at ninety five. I think they're predicting anywhere between ninety four and ninety six percent totality. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. If uh, if my coworker gets there in time to do shift change before totality ha happens, I'm getting on the roof tower to watch it. Yeah. Um, I mean, we saw one. The one that happened last time was a hundred percent here in Columbia, and I was unfortunately still station in texas and we only had about 80 percent, which i mean it was still cool but uh this one oh, i'm really? kind of excited for because it's about as close as uh yeah it's about as close as it's going to get to seeing a total one again we had total in i'm also City excited we don't have the, uh, yeah we don't have the traffic expected to fly in because believe it or not these people that love to fly and whatnot are, are enamored by you know the 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 sun and, and you know solar eclipse and things like that so i'm excited that we're going to get about as close to 100 as we're going to get without having to get the uh airline and airport traffic that Dude. comes with it so not only just that man the last time it happened here because like where i was at was total completion you know i was coming down i-29 and you know like on those horror movies like when the world ends and there's just cars parked on like the freeways that's what I-29 between St. Joe and Platte City looked like. Like, I was coming from St. Joe from work trying to go home, and it, was, it already happened. And, like, dude, like, I was just – it was cars parked. Because like, people would drive from other states and just park on I-29 to watch it. Oh, my gosh. It was a nightmare. It took me – it was a 45-minute drive. took me, like, three hours. It was a nightmare. Well, I am going to get to face that tomorrow because it is uh, – I'm – right in the path complete totality and so uh they're already saying there's going to be more people coming to the state of arkansas than the people that are actually in the state of arkansas the number of tourists Oof. will be greater than the state so infrastructure is going to be tested just a little bit but uh <laughs> get out and enjoy it because it's the last u.s total eclipse uh until 2044 so we're 20 years away i doubt we're doing a podcast by the time the next <laughs> eclipse happens uh yeah, says you i bet if, we're if we're still we're doing a podcast, podcast in the country hey i mean I bet we surprised joe rogan by then jason and travis yeah. will be retired and probably drink themselves to death so <laughs> i doubt they'll be doing theirs but uh who knows? So, you know, it's, I'm excited for it because I've got, you know, y'all as dads, you're probably excited for your kids to see something that's different, not normal, uh, and, and little educational parts of that. So, uh, get out and even if you're not in the, in the path of it, get out and look. You know, if you don't have yeah. the glasses, don't look up at the sun. Obviously, we're not trying to get anybody. We are not responsible for your eye damage. Uh, we have lawyers on our team, and you don't want to fight them in court. <laughs> yeah, Skeeter, you need to, uh, for those that um, 
that are you know follow us on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. During totality, you need to take a video because from what I've heard, you know, of course, again, I wasn't I wasn't here when um, the last one happened, but you know, the the frogs and spring peepers get to chirping and you know, birds yes. are starting to do like their nighttime thing. And I wouldn't I was just telling my coworker today, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these turkeys fly back up to roost and are like, oh crap, the day sure flew by. It's <laughs> time to go back to bed and then you know the the eclipse ends and whatnot and they get all confused That's a great and point. start gobbling. But um yeah, you need to take it a video does, and yeah. post the frogs, it to, uh, the frogs Twitter. came back out. It was Straight lights it's come wild, on like it's tough. I'll be at work, so I'll be on piece of heavy equipment, but I've got a pretty relaxed job, so it's not gonna be a thing to even if I've got a customer to, to load, I'll say, Hey, give me five minutes. I'm re- I'm taking part of this right now. So uh five minutes the sun's doing something weird. Yeah. yeah. There's there's all <laughs> kinds of conspiracy theories out there. And I've even heard a deal the other day on the radio and they said don't eat your food during the eclipse because the radioactive waves will make the food dangerous for you. Oh, okay, I'm going to so... eat a protein bar right in the middle of it now. <laughs> I'm well, okay. Spider Man or something, dude. I'm going to be the incredible Hulk by next time you guys see me. It was it was nice knowing you, buddy. You uh, when you when you die from the eclipse food, you know we'll. When we'll I'm say a superhero. Nice <laughs> when I literally am a superhero after this, yeah. <laughs> because I because I ate a protein bar in the middle of clips, you guys are like, oh, that's pretty sick. Fred's yeah. superhero. Yeah. All right. Well, Real I think that's one. that's that's a good good spot to cut off with. Um, big big news coming this week for us. Uh, so stay tuned to our Twitter page, and we will. Be coming out with that news. Uh, also, we have the NFL draft coming up. Uh, I think next week we'll be able to dive into previewing it a little bit more with our guys that are going uh, to the draft as far as being able to be drafted. Go ahead, Cole. I got to give a shout out to okay. a very, very faithful listener of ours. Congrats to Superfan Phil. Welcome to not only the dad team, but the girl dad team. Um, happy boop, for you, man. Boop, boop. Hope, uh, hope your wife and the baby are doing good and you're fine. You didn't do anything, so you'll be all right. Just get some sleep when you can. But uh, in all seriousness, congrats to you guys. Happy for you and uh, hope everybody's doing well. Big, big time congrats and Phil, I know you're a big time predator hunter. It is not legal to take your crying baby out there and try to call in the coyotes and bobcats with her crying. So uh, do not do that. <laughs> but uh, congrats to it. Uh, RIP to your your hunting and outdoor adventures that you used to be able to to go do as you pleased because that's that's You'll changed now. That has changed now. But. Uh, yeah, right. Once again, yeah, appreciate our presenting sponsor, Murphy Kenny Summy Law. Uh, reach out to them for anything you might need. Also, our guest segment sponsor, 573 T's, Mr. Mickey over there, and Rack Daddy Minerals for our outdoors segment. Fellas, hope you'll have a great week. Stay safe. As always, M I Z C O U. Go Tigers. Y'all take care.